Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about six ETFs that you could start investing in today to help start generating passive income in 2021. These six ETFs make it very easy for anybody to start investing in the stock market and also provides the potential for some pretty significant gains. The first five that we're gonna be talking about are from Vanguard, and if you're not familiar with Vanguard, they're one of the largest investment management firms in the world with over $6.7 trillion under management. And with that comes an endless amount of ETFs available to invest invest in, which gives pretty much any investor exposure to every single sector of the market. And these ETFs are great for beginners or anybody who wants to start investing in the stock market but doesn't want to be super active on a day-to-day -day basis. ETFs like this allow you to passively invest your money in the stock market and are a great way to help consistently grow your wealth over time. So I'll go through my top five ETFs to buy from Vanguard, and then at the end, I'll give you guys a bonus ETF that I think has a ton of growth potential for the future, so I think you'll really like it. So by the the end of this video, you will one, have six new ETF ideas that you could start investing in today. Two, you'll know exactly what is in them when it comes down to the stocks that are actually in the fund itself. And three, you will know how much money you could expect to make if you do decide to invest in some of these ETFs. So make sure to watch all the way through to get the most value out of this video. And if any of this information helps you along the way, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this every single week. Okay, so the first ETF on the list is probably the most popular and is also owned by the majority of long-term investors. The ticker symbol is V which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 and it currently trades for $356.22 a share. And the reason this ETF is so popular is because the S&P 500 is the main index that's used as the benchmark for the market. So investing in this ETF is pretty much like investing in every single stock in the S&P 500, but for a fraction of the cost. So let's take a look at what's inside this ETF. So if we go into Vanguard's website under the product description for this ETF, you can see that the goal is to closely track the S&P 500 return. And it also offers a high potential for investment growth because it doesn't hold any bonds. So if you're looking to invest in something that has similar returns to the market, then this is probably your best bet. And when you compare this ETF to the actual S&P 500, you can see this ETF is made up of 509 stocks compared to the S&P with 505, and they both have a median market cap of 176.8 billion. Diversification of these two are also pretty much identical. Here is every single sector in the market and you can see exactly how this ETF is constructed and see how it's weighted by exact percentages. So just like the S&P, this ETF is heavily weighted to tech, which amounts to 27.8%, then healthcare, consumer discretionary, and so on. And if you want to break it down even further, here are the top 10 holdings that amount for 29% of the fund. Well, at number one, you have Apple, and then you have Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Tesla, etc. And if you're looking to invest in these companies in individually, even if you just bought one share, it would cost you thousands of dollars, which isn't realistic for most new investors. So instead of buying individual shares of these companies, you could just invest in this one ETF and then have exposure to the entire index that way. And another really cool feature that Vanguard offers on their website is that they show you exactly how much the ETF returns on a one year, three year, five year, and 10 year basis, just so you can have an idea of how much money you could expect to make if you do invest in that ETF. So the return last year was just over 17%, which is a huge gain. And then if you go across the board, the three year average is around 12%. 5 years, 16%, 10 year, 13 and a half. And since the ETF was created back in 2010, the average return has been 14.78%. Then if you go over and take a look at this chart, you can see hypothetically how a $10,000 investment is expected to grow over X amount of years. And the growth that you saw from that chart was only if you deposited $10,000 and didn't contribute any more money along the way. Usually people will consistently contribute to that fund so that their money will actually grow a lot more than that. So these are very solid returns, but the main point that you should pay attention to is how consistent they are because consistency is everything in the market and that's how you're going to grow your money over time without having these major drawdowns. If you're just investing in individual stocks, that stock could very easily be down on the year or could even be down five years later. So when you invest in ETFs like this, it's very consistent because there are a lot of stocks in that index. So this is definitely something that I think you guys should check out. All right, the next one on the list is an ETF that tracks the tech sector. And this one is a little bit riskier. Vanguard rates it a five out of five on the risk scale. 
but with more risk comes more reward. The ticker symbol is VGT and it currently costs just under $363. In this ETF, there are 345 stocks, which account for $46.4 billion worth of total net assets. Here are the top 10 holdings, which account for over 50% of this entire fund. Once again, we have Apple right at the top of the list, and then Microsoft, Nvidia, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Intel. So there's a pretty good mix of tech growth stocks in here. And what I like about this ETF is that yes, there is more risk involved, but once again, with more risk comes more reward. So when you're betting on an industry like tech and something that I personally think has a ton of growth potential for the future, then this is definitely an ETF where you could make a lot of money. So let's take a look at some of these returns going back a few years to see what you could expect to make if you do invest in this ETF. Last year, there was a massive return of over 45%, which is crazy. The three-year average return was just over 30%. The five year was 28%, 10 year 20.5%. And since the ETF was created back in 04, the average return has been 13.7%. Clearly, you can see how much the tech sector has outperformed compared to the rest of the market over the past couple of years. So, investing in ETFs like this definitely paid off big time. And here's another look where we can once again see hypothetically how a $10,000 investment would grow over 10 years. So, if you think there is still a lot of growth potential in the tech sector, I definitely recommend taking a closer look into this ETF. All right, next up is ticker symbol VOOG, which is an S&P 500 growth ETF that currently trades for $233.51. And this one is fairly similar to the first ETF that I talked about that tracked the S&P 500, except this one just focuses on a smaller group of stocks and just growth stocks that are within that index. And the S&P ETF was also composed of over 500 stocks, but you can see with this one that it only has 232 stocks in the index with a smaller market cap of 316 billion. If we take a look into the diversification of this ETF, you can see that it is more heavily weighted into tech than VOO because that's where a lot of these growth stocks are. And in the top 10 holdings that account for 50% of the funds weighting, you have stocks like Apple, Microsoft that are at the top of the list, but then you can see some other companies in the bottom like Nvidia, PayPal, Netflix, and Adobe. And and those 10 stocks account for 50% of the fund, which means that the other 50% is made up of 200 more growth stocks within that index. And I really like this ETF because it's kind of a mix of the last two, right? You have some larger cap stocks like Apple and Microsoft, then some smaller cap stocks that have some more growth potential. So it kind of just balances out the index. And here's how this ETF has performed over the past couple of years. A one year basis, it gained 30%. 20% on a three year. And then since the ETF was created in 2010, the average gain has been over 17%. So this ETF has a very strong history and I think it's a great option for any investor who wants to invest in the S&P 500, but might have a little bit higher risk tolerance. All right, next up we have ticker symbol VBK, which is another ETF that targets growth stocks, but instead of growth stocks in the S&P 500, it focuses more on small caps. So this is probably the riskiest investment out of the four so far. Vanguard does rate it as a five on their scale, but when you compare it to just investing in individual small cap stocks, the risk is still relatively very low. Small cap stocks can be volatile, but with volatility comes a good margin for profit. So when we look into this ETF, you can see there are 612 stocks with a median market cap of $7 billion. And what you'll notice is that out of the four ETFs that I've mentioned, this one is composed of the most stocks, which means that it has the most equal weighting throughout the whole index. So even though it's weighted pretty equally, here are the top 10 holdings in the fund. We have Plug Power, Enphase Energy, MongoDB, Catalan, et cetera, but you can see that these top 10 holdings only account for 8% of the total net assets. And I like how this one's weighted because it gives you much more exposure to the entire index instead of just having the top 10 holdings account for 50% of the fund. Let's compare this one to the others and see how it's performed in the past. On a one-year basis, there is a 35% return, a three-year average of nearly 20%, and 11% since the ETF was created back in 04. And here's the hypothetical growth of a $10,000 account, and it shows you how it would grow without adding any money to the fund. All right, so the last last ETF that we're going to be talking about from Vanguard is by far made up of the most stocks that we've seen so far. The ticker symbol is VTWG, and this is to track the Russell 2000 index. It's composed of 1,163 stocks with the fund's total net assets coming out to $1.4 billion. And here's the exact portfolio.
portfolio construction. It's mainly weighted towards healthcare and technology because that's the industry that a lot of these small cap companies in the Russell are in. But with over 1,000 stocks in this ETF, there's pretty equal weighting and it's not too focused on just one stock. So even though a lot of the stocks in the Russell 2000 can be risky to invest in at times, there's so many of them inside of this one ETF that the winners and losers kind of just balance each other out. Either way, here are the top 10 holdings. And like I said, it doesn't really make too much of a difference because they account for less than 8% of the fund. And here's how the ETF has performed relative to the Russell 2000. 2000 growth index. There was a big return last year of 34.7% and pretty steady returns all the way back to its inception in 2010. All right, guys, so those are my top five ETFs to buy from Vanguard. And now let's get into the last ETF that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. This one is ticker symbol MSOS, which is a US cannabis ETF. And I think this ETF provides a ton of opportunity for investors like us, because even though there is a decent amount of hype in the cannabis space right now, we are still in the very early stages. And the cool thing about this ETF is that it's specific to companies here in the US. And I know that there's a lot of Canadian cannabis stocks that are popular in the market right now, like Tilray or Canopy Growth, but those are Canadian stocks. And what we want to be focusing on are stocks here that are in the US, because that is where the true growth opportunity really is. And cannabis is not fully legal here in the US. So once we start to see more states legalize it over the years, that's where these smaller companies will have a huge opportunity and will be able to grow at a much quicker rate compared to these companies that are in Canada where it's already legal. But anyways, as of right now, the ETF cost $50.62, and I think it has a ways to go from here. But here are some of the fund's top holdings, and you might not even recognize some of the names because these are the up and coming companies. But this is a good thing, right? Because you wanna be investing in companies and stocks like this before they become the canopies and the Tilrays of the market and just before everybody knows about them. So if you believe in the potential that this industry has to offer, you should definitely look into this ETF. It's one that I personally own and will probably hold on to it for quite some time. But that's it for today's video. I hope that information helped some of you guys out. If it did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time. Peace.